What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next question, what we have to do is maximize Z is equal to six X plus five Y with these restrictions here. X is greater than or equal to zero. Y is greater than or equal to zero. X plus Y is less than or equal to seven. And then two X plus two Y is greater than or equal to four. So first thing I'm gonna do is graph these restrictions here. These are lines. And notice that x is greater than or equal to zero or y is greater than or equal to zero. Notice that that just means that the area we're gonna look at is gonna be in this first quadrant, right? x being greater than or equal to zero, this is x equals zero. It's the, um, the y-axis, the line x is equal to zero. And so x is greater than or equal to zero would be this area here and then y is greater than or equal to zero notice that y equals zero is the x-axis so that would be everything above that x-axis right there right that's why i said that it's going to be here with these two restrictions now with these it's going to take a little bit more work so we have x plus y is less than or equal to seven now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to write out x plus y is equal to seven first, just to graph it. And then from there, we'll, uh, we'll bring back this uh, less than or equal to sign. So from here, notice that it's pretty easy to find out the X and Y intercepts. So if I, if I wanna find out the Y intercept, I plug in zero for X and notice that it would be seven, right? So this line here, as the coordinate is zero and seven. If I wanted to find out the x-intercept, I plug in zero for y, and x is equal to seven, so it's gonna be seven and zero. So this is the x-intercept, that's the y-intercept of this line, x plus y is equal to seven. And so if we graph that, I'm gonna keep it to scale here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the point zero and seven, and then we have um, this point here, seven and zero. Right? And then we could just join those points to graph this line x plus y is equal to seven. So you don't necessarily have to find the intercepts, you could find any other two points. Personally, with these linear programming examples, that's what I do, right? So that's the line there. Now, in terms of knowing which area we're looking at, we have to work with this symbol again. So if we rewrite this up here as x plus y is less than or equal to seven, what I do is I isolate for the y, right? So I bring the x over, so all the y values have to be less than or equal to negative x plus 7. So whenever you get the y isolated being less than or equal to this line here, remember negative x plus 7 is this line, so basically the area we're looking at is all the y values that are less than this line, so it's going to be this area over here. I'm not going to shade it in just because we have another line to graph and I don't want to get too crazy on the graph here so I'm just going to put an arrow a small arrow from this line representing that it's basically this area that we're looking at over here right if this was y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 7 we'd be looking at this area over here all the y values greater than this line Right now, moving on to the next line, we have 2x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 4. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with 2x plus 2y is equal to 4 to find out two points on the line and then join the two points, graph them on this same graph. Now, notice that we could actually divide everything by 2, which is nice. So really, we can just work with this. You don't necessarily have to, but x plus y is equal to 2 is the same line as 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. And then from here, if we follow that same process of finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept, plug in 0 for x, 
solve for y, we'd have 0 and 2. And then if we wanted to find the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y, and then we'd get 2 and 0. Right? So we got 0 and 2. And then we have 2 and 0, which is down here. Right? So if we join those points, we get that line right there. x plus y is equal to 2. That's, lit, uh, that's this line. Now, in terms of the area that we are looking at, what you want to do is bring back that symbol. So now we're going to look at this. Um, and then let's just pretend we divide it by 2 here. So basically, x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. Isolate for the y. We'll have y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. So all the y values greater than or equal to this line. So if they're greater than or equal to, that's the area above it that we are looking at, right? If it was less than or equal to, it would be this area that we're looking. And now that we have everything graphed, we have this line graph, this line graph, and then x is equal to 0 is just this. y is equal to 0 is just this. Right, and from this line, we're looking at this area, and then from this line, we're looking at this area. While combining everything, it's pretty obvious to see that the area that we're going to be dealing with, the region bounded by all these restrictions, is that right there. Right, so now that's the first step, finding this region here. But now we got to figure out where in this region is 6x plus 5y going to be maximized? And the, um, the point at which it's going to be maximized is always going to be a corner point of the area that you're looking at. Notice that there's four corners of this area here, 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 and here. There's no other edges or corners. And notice that this example is pretty nice because we already have the coordinates of all the corners. A lot of times you're going to have examples, we'll go through examples like that too, where there's going to be lines intersecting, and so you're going to have to find the point of intersection between certain lines. But in this case, these two lines are actually parallel, so they're not intersecting. And so getting these corners is, uh, is pretty easy. We're actually, we already have the coordinates of the corners. And so what you want to do now, pretty easy, is you just want to plug in these corners. So we could start with 0 or, uh, yeah, 0 and 7, 0 and 2. We got 2 and 0, and then we have 7 and 0. And all you want to do is plug in these values into the objective function z that you're looking at and then see which one of those is going to give you the highest value. So if we plug in 0 for x, 7 for uh, y, we would have 6 times 0, which is 0, plus 5 times 7, which is 35, so that would be 35. Plug in 0, 2, we'll have 10. Uh, 2 and 0, we would have 12. And then 7 and 0, we would have... 42, like that. And then you just see which one of those we're maximizing this. If it said minimizing, we'd be looking at the smallest value, but it said maximize. So which of these has the um, highest value for z? Well, the 42. And then which point is it maximized at? This point here, 7 and 0. So at this point here, this objective function is maximized with a value of 42. Right, so I feel like this part is the easiest. I think the trickiest part is getting that region. This one wasn't too bad, but again, there could be a lot more restrictions. They could be more complex. And finding these corner points can sometimes be more of a complex process. And we'll go over examples where it is more complex. But that's the basic 
process for all these questions. You want to find this region bounded by all the restrictions, then get the corners, and then just test the corners with your objective function, whether you're maximizing or minimizing it, and then get that certain value.